So these bees are feeling really good today. They're in full flight. They are in the supplement feeder. They are flying. The bees are feeling good and so am I. Drinking down syrup. So I just want to take a look down into this nest. The, the, uh, the supplement's been on. We've had patties on for, I forget how many days now, four, five, maybe five days. And they're consuming the patties and I just want to see if I can see any direct translation into the brood nest, any response of having those those protein patties on. There's always an argument amongst bee beekeepers on how much benefit we're actually providing these hives by uh, providing the supplement. I'll always argue that focusing on nutrition is extremely important when uh, when we're managing these hives, when we're managing any animal in fact. I feel that an animal that's well fed is an animal that's going to just exhibit healthy behavior. And after that's after all what we're trying to achieve as we manage these bees. Just like any other uh, animal that we try to manage, we try to manage their nutrition to bring out their absolute excellence. So what I'm trying to achieve with these patties is just to provide a supplement to their feed, to their, to their nutritional requirement that's within this nest right now. Last fall, these colonies set themselves up to provide them with the resource they needed to get through the winter, but also to uh, rear that spring brood, that early spring brood to transition that winter nest into that springtime nest. And they do that, they, uh, they pack their nest full of honey, you know, the, the, the energy they need, uh, packing the nest with pollen, that is the, uh, the protein source that they need to build, develop that nest in that next spring. But they also, what they do is they pack on fats and proteins onto their bodies, just like any other animal packs on the, all that energy and resource onto themselves. So as they develop that winter nest, they're also, uh, they're bringing the resource in and storing it within their colony, but also within themselves. So that winter nest, you can think of that, that cluster of bees is holding a very valuable resource of, of all those unique protein and fats, all that, the, those dynamics there that they need to build to use to develop the feed necessary to, to build the brood that this spring. So here we are, spring is now. Uh, they have the resources within the colony. They don't have any resources to collect outside the colony yet, but they have to take this winter nest and flip it into spring. So they're using all the resources within this box within the frames of stores, the honey frames of pollen stores, and all the, the resources packed onto themselves to, uh, to develop that initial brood nest, which gets them into spring. Extremely important. And that's something that is completely out of my control. It's just something that happens, right? And we need available resources in the surrounding environment to enable them to do that. Uh, my job as a beekeeper is just to try to uh, help that along, just to try to stimulate that, just try to uh, supplement all the resource they need. And I'm doing that by providing them with syrup, just to keep them alive so when they run short, stimulate them with the syrup just to give them that, you know, jolt of fresh resource coming in to excite that queen to get her laying. And I'm doing that with these protein patties, just trying to uh, complement the pollen stores within the nest, complement the resources on their bodies, and just to provide them just a real bulk protein to um, help um, build the bees within, within that nest. Anyways, digging down into this nest, and as you can see, they've consumed half this patty already. This is some of that Alltec uh, supplement that I, Carrie and I made up. They're just devouring this stuff. So I'm anticipating they're translating this protein supplement into the brood nest and I should see response in that brood nest having this protein injection into the colony here. So these guys were light but they looks like they're packing on the syrup for now so they're good for food stores. Probably give them a little bit of uh, a little bit more syrup anyways just to keep them going. It's nice to have fresh syrup coming in as they develop their nest and need lots of energy and what we want to see is syrup rimmed around the brood nest. That's that's kind of what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to determine whether a colony is starving or not, you look around the immediate brood nest to see if it's being rimmed with syrup. You want to see that syrup rim. These guys have a little bit of 
Poland in this frame, which is really good to see. Here's a frame full of eggs. This side is full of eggs. Just a little bit of mature larvae. This nest has already extended out to the far side, which is really positive. Now we're starting to get into some capped brood, rimmed with eggs. And mature larvae on this side. There's the queen. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking down into this brood nest and here I'll pull another frame here. So as you look at this brood frame here, this is mature brood. Uh, I'm not sure if you can really see, but it's like it's not a solid frame of brood, right? I'm looking into here and I'm seeing cat brood with larvae and eggs all through it. And it's, it's scattered like that, it's spotty. Now the bees, have, when we set them out, the queen will start laying and there isn't that inflow of resource coming into the, the, into the hive. So you'll, we see initially out of the shed this um, almost spotty, kind of not solid brood frames. And it's just basically because that queen's just starting to lay, there isn't a lot of nutrition coming in. But I'm looking in the cells, and you can't see that. I know you can't see that. But what I'm seeing here is a shiny frame, okay? Because these the larvae in here looks well fed. They look they look. It doesn't look like it would if there was pollen coming in. But these, these larvae are swimming in an adequate amount of royal jelly. And on this side too. So I'll just take a look at the queenie here. She's right here. But on this frame what I'm seeing is a lot of larvae of the same age. Um, more solid laying, more solid laying pattern. Um, more predictable, uh, more uniform. I'm, I've anticipated that because I've put on supplement, I'm feeding the syrup, I'm giving them protein, um, it's getting warmer out. That colony is allowing that queen to ramp up her egg laying. And she's filling in more cells, she's looking for more space, she's filling it all up. And she's doing it on a uniform basis. She has all the nutrition she needs. These larvae look absolutely brilliant, they're shiny, they're well fed, there's lots of royal jelly in the bottom of these cells. This is what I want to see. This is kind of what you see when uh, pollen starts coming in. That queen gets really excited when that fresh pollen starts coming in and she just starts laying like crazy. She'll stretch the uh, cluster's ability right to the max. She'll fill all those cells right up. Those bees will have all that nutrition coming in to feed all these larvae an adequate uh, diet without having to pull back at all. So what I'm seeing here in this nest is lots of eggs being laid. That queen is obviously stimulated. I'm seeing, you know, old brood that's going to emerge shortly that has been developed without, you know, that excitement. And now I'm seeing a brood nest being developed with excitement and anticipation of uh, lots of feed on hand and food feed coming in. So that's my uh, that's my whole motivation behind feeding this supplement. So I'll just put her back. She's laying like crazy there. So I'm seeing what I want to see. So now I'm going to go to a yard which we haven't fed yet and put my money where my mouth is. If I dig down into those colonies which don't have the supplement coming in, well they'll still still have the ultra bee coming in. But without the patties on, 
I shouldn't see the same uh, amount of resource being spent on that brood nest. So we'll go see. So I'm back in the yard joining Carrie here to help her finish out uh, feeding the patties in these hives. But I'm going to dig down into this colony first just to take a look to see what this brood nest looks like. This hive has not had a patty put on it yet. They're bringing in the dry supplement from the feeders there. I want to just want to see if there's any difference between the development of this early spring nest as compared to the one that we just dug into. So this is probably, I'm looking at a eight to nine frame uh, hive. I tip back. It'll be much the same size as, uh, this is a, like a box of bees. This will be a little bit bigger than the colony that we just dug into. They have lots of food on hand. And let me just dig down in here. I'm not going to spend too much time because I got to get back to work here. But it's really important um, doing this, digging down into the nests. As a commercial beekeeper, we have our job at hand. We know what we're doing, we know what we're supposed to. We look at the calendar, we point at the calendar. This has to be done by this certain date. And we go through and we start working through the hives and treat them all the same, get them all fed up. But we have trouble, or I do anyways, of actually getting down into the nest to see what's going on. This time of year, it's not important to get down here. It's actually better if we don't get into the nest, just to leave them alone, let them develop. But we gotta make sure that all the work that we're doing is actually translating into benefiting this nest. So by spending a little bit of time, just reassessing, just uh, observing, just making sure that what's happening is actually happening. just need to be able to confirm our efforts. So I'm looking at a good frame of honey here. Syrup has been getting packed away. This looks really healthy. The bees are in a good mood. I'm just going to dig in. That breeze just feels terrific today. So I'm looking down, here's a good frame of brood. Room to syrup. A terrific looking nest. So I'm seeing what I'm seeing in this colony here. It's just a beautiful brood nest being developed. just as the other one. Here's another frame. I'm having trouble seeing him in the shadow here. Fantastic looking brood nest. Side full of eggs. full of eggs and the larvae are starting to hatch. And looking down to the bottom, there's the queen, beautiful queen. Looking down to the bottom to the larvae, and the larvae are swimming in royal jelly. Pull one more frame before I stop here. Here's a frame of that early spring brood, kind of spotty. A mature brood. Okay, so what I'm seeing in this colony is exactly the same as I'm seeing in the colony with the 
protein patties on. Here's a little bit of spotty brood, really old brood. Eggs all through it. So this queen is ramped right up. Let's see if there's any pollen stores. Now a stitch of pollen. So what I am seeing here, the colony has had no patty on it. The colony is bringing in, supplementing the open feeders. This colony looks absolutely no different than the other colony that had the protein patty on. It makes a guy wonder if um, all the effort we're putting into putting those patties on first thing in the spring is yeah. worth it when I'm looking at this colony. The development of the brood nest is looking absolutely terrific. No different than the one that I have the patty on. So there's a lot of things beekeepers do that might just be a feel-good exercise. And one of the arguments amongst a lot of beekeepers is feeding protein patties is merely just one of those feel-good exercises. According to what I just seen here today, I anticipated finding a better nest on the colony that has been eating that protein patty uh, for about a week now. I anticipated seeing that colony being having a superior brood nest than the one that I didn't have a protein patty on yet. That's what I was anticipating. Kind of caught me off guard a little bit because I did not find that whatsoever. And the equalizing factor here might be the open feed here. These bees are in this open feeder. They're as excited in this open feeder as I'm finding those queens are excited in these nests. They're bringing in a high quality supplement here and is really stimulating that queen to, to grow, to give her. It's obviously it's providing enough nutrition to be able to lavishly feed that nest. So there's a lot of argument between beekeepers on the actual benefit of providing supplement patties. We're just wasting a lot of money and time. So what I found just reinforced that argument. What I anticipate and what I'll be looking for really closely here as we go, and it was I found in the past too, is that when the bees can access this feeder, and because they're not storing it in the nest, they're turning it directly into bee brood, like into royal jelly to feed the bee brood. Um, there's very little pollen within that nest. I'm anticipating if there's an extended period of time where they can't access this feeder, that they're gonna fall into protein stress and that's gonna hurt the nest. Whereas I'm anticipating the ones with the protein patty on top will be able to access that protein and continue development of that throughout the incremental weather. If I don't see any direct positive response from these patties throughout the spring, then, you know, maybe we just provide the open dry feed like this and then just wait for the trees, right? Thank <laughs> you.